ओके अ वेरी गुड इवनिंग वन वन एंड ऑल आई वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यून अवर इंटर्नशिप प्रोग्राम गोइंग इन टू द फील्ड ऑफ डेटा एनालिटिक्स मशीन लर्निंग डीप लर्निंग एंड ए आई प्लीज कन्फर्म दैट माई वॉइस इज क्लियरली ऑडिबल एंड माई स्क्रीन इज विजिबल ओके गाइज ग्रेट सो लेट स्टार्ट द टू डे सेशन आई वुड लाइक टू रिक्वेस्ट दोज हुआ ज्वाइनिंग फ्रॉम द लैपटॉप सो प्लीज डू वन थिंग पैरलली प्लीज ज्वाइन द गूगल को लैब विथ मी ओके पैरलली प्लीज ज्वाइन द गूगल को लैब विथ मी एंड टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न सो मेनी थिंग्स सो द थिंग इज टूडे जस्ट आई एम गोइंग टू गूगल को लैब ओके एंड दिस पेज विल ओपन ओपन द गूगल को लैब गाइज <laughs> and you people please click on new notebook you people please click on new notebook like this and open the google collab the moment you will open the google collab please write down in the chat window that you have open the google collab guys so that i can guide you further please tell me how you people open the google collab or not okay great okay so what we will do today i am going to open my different package and i will explain you what to do today we are going to learn data science packages and i am guiding you that so i am going to google collab in front of you and uh, you people have opened the new notebook and now parallelly i am going to upload the notebook in front of you in the google collab today we are going to learn the data science packages which is required for the data analysis actually so i am uh, clicking in front of you data science packages i am going to numpy and i am going to explain you numpy what is the meaning of numpy and please parallelly practice with me okay please parallelly practice with me so that you will understand what is this numpy package about okay guys so now please concentrate today we are going one step ahead to learn the data analytics field and in the world of data analytics we are going to learn the data science packages what do in by data science packages so please concentrate carefully okay the thing is right now we have learned the basics of python language okay we have learned the basics of python that is the first step we have learned the basics of python language okay we learn this basics of python okay just a second guys just a second just give me a moment guys just give me a moment i am having one urgent call hello nahi mujhe bhi kuch nahi aap pahunch gaye ghar pahunch gaye मुझे लगा कि भारी हो गया अभी इसलिए मैं कॉल ही नहीं कर पा रहा था आपको आई थॉट डेट यूर आउटसाइड ओके मुझे लगा कि बाहर ही हो ओके आई डोंट नो मेरे को तुमने बोला ही नहीं कि तो कब पहुंचे कब आए तो मुझे लगा कि बाहर ही हो क्या सो so, बालाजी का तो कुछ आया नहीं है मुझे ओके एंड ओके 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 आई एम इन द सेशन या ओके okay sorry guys so uh, what i was guiding you that uh, we have learned the python language and in the second right now after learning the basics of python we are going to learn the data science packages okay dsp the full form is called as the dsp data science packages so in the data science packages the these are the four major data science packages that we are going to learn it one is called as numpy one is called as pandas one is called as matplotlib one is called as the seaborn and why we are learning it i am i also guiding you that and one is called as a sklearn 
very famous and the important packages so these are the data science packages with the help of this data science packages packages means library we are going to take the real time data rtd real time data of any industry and we can do the analysis on that with the help of these packages always remember why we are learning these packages very important we are going to read the data of any industry and with the help of these packages we are going to do the data analysis of that okay so this is that major part so in that first of the package is called as a numpy so we are learning the numpy package right now and i am going to guide you what to do parallelly you people please open the google collab with me so the thing is numpy full form is numerical python numerical python is the full form of numpy numerical python is the full form of numpy okay and now this numpy package is useful for numerical operation that is mathematical operation in array always remember numpy full form is numerical python and it is used for mathematical operation in array okay mathematical operation in array so i am importing the numpy package so concentrate i am importing the numpy package and this numpy is n u m p y all in a small case so parallelly you people please write down like this import numpy so we are going to import the numpy package which is useful for numerical python that is numerical operation that is mathematical operation in array so we are going to create the array and we are going to do the operation in that so the thing is first of all i am importing the numpy and after importing the numpy i will create the array with the help of numpy so first line i am importing numpy and the second line with the help of numpy i am creating the array numpy dot array and in that i am giving you the five data in that five data okay 1 2 3 4 5 so i will give the five data this five data will convert to array with the help of numpy and after converting to array it will give to the variable called as arr so when i will check what is arr so it will tell that arr is nothing but the array of five data 1 2 3 4 5 see array of five data so in this way we can create the array using the numpy package and we can perform the n number of operation in that that i am going to guide you but the thing is in the world whenever we are using the numpy package so everything every time we need to write down this full form numpy so it will take a time consuming process it should not happen so what we will do instead of this numpy okay we will write down np as a abbreviation form okay as a abbreviation form np okay so every time when we want to use the numpy we will not use we will not write down numpy we will write down np we will write down np so import numpy as np so now the same thing i will create the array with the help of numpy i will not write numpy i will write down np so numpy abbreviation is np now every property of numpy is available in np so i am going to write down numpy dot array and the five data and it will create the array and give to the variable arr and i am checking what is this arr about so the thing is first i need to run this and this one okay so 1 2 3 4 so in this way we can create the array guys so what i will guide you that please concentrate carefully so i will tell you how to create zero dimensional array one dimensional array two dimensional array and the three dimensional array and we can perform the operation in that and it is very necessary in the real time world whenever we will read the data so we have to perform the operation in that guys okay always remember this so the thing is right now i would like to request all of you please open the google collab and parallelly with me let's create the zero dimensional array one dimensional array two dimensional array and the three dimensional array and we will perform the operation on that okay so let's open that please uh, parallelly tell me have you opened the google collab guys have you opened the google collab great so see i am i am pasting this code or else you can write down parallelly with me so the very first thing that we are going to create a zero dimensional array we are going to create a zero dimensional array for that purpose what we are doing we are importing numpy as np and in the second line i am creating array what do you mean by zero dimensional array 
वन स्केलर वैल्यू ओनली जस्ट पास वन स्केलर वैल्यू टू द नंपाय अरे इट विल क्रिएट द वन और जीरो डायमेंशनल अरे सो वॉट आई एम डूइंग आई एम राइटिंग एन पी डॉट अरे एंड आई एम पासिंग ओनली वन स्केलर वैल्यू and this scalar value will given to this np dot array and it will give to the variable call as arr okay and it is going to print arr so it will create a zero dimensional array in front of you so please run this instruction i am copying and pasting in the chat window please let me know that uh, uh, you can able to copy or paste in the chat window or not i don't know please let me know i am copying this and i am pasting in the chat window check it whether you can able to copy or paste or not so in this way i have created a zero dimensional array zero dimensional array guys please let me know once you execute this code then i will write down how to create the one dimensional array we will create the one dimensional array in the zero dimensional array we are only passing one scalar value check it only one value at a time it will create a zero dimensional array okay once it is create that then let's go ahead how to create the one dimensional array and how to do the mathematical operation on that so to create one dimensional array we will create a list guys list this is list check it it is in the square bracket everything is same np dot array and in this array we will pass one list this list consists of four data 1 2 3 4 it consists of the four data i can give to 10 data also 100 data also so i will give this four data and this data will be converted to array and it will give to the variable called as a underscore 1d a underscore 1d and then in the next line i am checking what is a underscore 1d so it is a one dimensional array check it one dimensional array so array means collection of a data guys those who are having suppose difficulty in understanding what is array so array is nothing but one kind of data storage which store the same kind of data so check it in this 1 2 3 4 all are the integer so it will store all integer data that is a array storing the same kind of data is called as a array so i am creating the one dimensional array and giving it to the variable a underscore 1d now the same thing i will create so many things in that but let's check that once we create the array how to check the array operation so a underscore 1d is equal to np dot array 1 2 3 4 okay so the thing is we are creating this four data and give it to the variable a underscore 1d and we will check this a underscore 1d variable okay and this is the array so to check that whether this is array or not we are going to write down this variable type type is a predefined function so we will check the data type of a underscore 1d so we will write down type and we will write down a underscore 1d so it will give the data type of a underscore 1d and what is the data of a underscore 1d array so it will give us array numpy dot nd array so it tells tell us that that a underscore 1d is a variable which store the array now having the array now inside the array if you want to check it what is the data type of this data what is the data type of this 1 2 3 4 4 okay so please tell me guys what is this 1 2 3 4 it is a integer float or string tell me what is this if you want to check what is the data type of 1 2 3 4 4 then we will write down this instruction variable name a underscore 1d a underscore 1d dot d type so this d type meaning is integer 32 it is storing the integer data it is storing the integer data 1 2 3 4 okay this is that type so the thing is that we are storing the integer data and if we want to check that we will write down variable name dot d type it will give the data type of what is the data store in the array okay so please parallelly perform with me i am writing all this in the chat window so i am was writing this in the chat window please write in the google colab <laughs> in this way we will create the one dimensional array in this way we will check the data type of the array i am pasting in the chat window in this way we will check the data type of the element of the array i am pasting the code in the chat window if i want to check the dimension of the data dimension of array that how many dimension array we have created so we will write down like that 
a underscore one d dot end dim. End dim will tell us that what is the dimension of a underscore one d. And we have created one dimensional array, so it will give the answer as a one. It will give the answer as a one. Okay, this is the answer. A underscore one d dot end dim, and answer is one. Okay, so let me copy this and paste it. So these are the different operation we are performing on the array data. What is the data type of the array? If you want to check it, so write down type and variable name. If you want to check the data type of the data inside the array, what kind of data array is holding? So write down variable name called D type and n dimensional array is this. What is the dimension of array? And if you want to check how many data the array is holding, how many data is array is holding? So I will write down a underscore one d dot size. A underscore one d dot size. Okay, so it will give that four data we are storing under the array. And if you want to check the shape of the data, how many rows and columns are there? So write down this a underscore one d dot size. It will give this. So we are having four column right now. Okay, sorry, four column and one row. <coughs> So in this way, we will create the one dimensional array guys, one dimensional array. Similarly, we can go for creating the two dimensional array. So check it, how to create the two dimensional array, same variable np dot array. And now I will write down all list like this. Okay. I will write down, I will create the three list. The first list is this one, two, three, four comma. Second list is this five, six, seven, eight. Comma third list is this two two three four five two two three four five. Okay, so if I am writing in this way, so if suppose I want to create three row and four column, so I will create three list. So this is the first list. Inside that four elements are there. So this is acting as a first row. Then this is the second list. It is acting as a second row. And this is a third list. This is acting as a third row. And we are giving it to the NumPy array. It will convert this all to the array and give it to the variable a underscore 2D. And inside one list, there are four element. So that four element contribute to, it is called as the uh, columns, we can say column. So one, two, three, four is the first row and having four column. One, two, three, four. This is the second row having four column, third row, four column. And when we will check this array, so it will look like this, check it. So this is the array of two dimensional, two dimensional means it is having the three rows and four columns. Check it. It is having three rows and the four column. <coughs> it is having three rows and the four column. Are you getting now? Please check it. Same thing. I am creating the other two dimensional array. So one two dimensional array I have created in the variable called as a underscore 2D. This is the one two dimensional array and a underscore 3D will be the second <coughs> two dimensional array. Okay. So in this also we are creating the three row and the four column. So I am copying and pasting this code in the chat window. Please parallelly practice this along with me so that you can understand what things are going on. Check it guys. Check it. I have created the two two dimensional array guys. And we will do the mathematical operation in front of you now. Check it. Okay. I will do that mathematical operation. In our school days, we have performed the array operation. If you remember during our school days, we have performed the array operation. So we have created two array. One array name is a underscore 2D and the second array name is a underscore 3D. Okay, if you are not able to copy, so please, I am holding this screen for a two to three minute. Please write down this code. Please write down this code and let me know here written or not. <coughs> I am holding this screen now. Okay. And before that, you need to write down this. Okay. Before that, please write down this. Otherwise, it will get error. Import numpy as 
NP. Import NumPy as NP. Sure, I will send that. Okay, sure, I will send that, Gopal. So please create NumPy array so that it will easy for you to practice. So please write down this code, guys. I am I am having this code in front of you. Please write down this. Then I will explain you how to do the mathematical operation on that. Please do it parallelly with me. So if you will check that school mathematics, so in the school mathematics, we have performed this part. Okay. We have performed this part. So please check it. And uh, the thing is that whatever the mathematical operation we people are performing. Okay. Just a second. Let me open that file again, guys. I am mistakenly close that Google Colab. So we are learning the data science packages. The NumPy is that package numerical Python and uh, to work on the numerical Python. Okay. We are importing the package called as NumPy as NP and we are actually using this NumPy package to perform mathematical operation on array. So we have to create the arrays. So there are four type of array, zero dimensional array, one dimensional array, two dimensional array and the three dimensional array. Okay. So the thing is, in this dimensional of array data, we have created for zero dimensional array. After that, we have created one dimensional array, this one. After that, I have pasted the code in the chat window. We have created the two dimensional array. This one is the two dimensional array. And I have shown you if I will add the both two dimensional array, it will give the result an array of the two dimensional only. Check it. This is that part. Okay. So in this way, we are performing the array operation, guys. One dimensional, two dimensional, three dimensional and so on. Is this clear? Very good. So now I will show you the different part whenever the real time data is coming to us. So how we are dealing with the help of NumPy package. So for that purpose, now it is very easy. I am going to guide you that how we are performing the operations on that. Just a second. I will show you that.
just give me a moment i am opening that file i will share all this data with you people okay i will share all this data with you so that you can take that okay so let me explain you that okay guys check it now again i am going to perform so many mathematical operation on array uh, so i am going to perform trigonometrical operation in our mathematics with the help of numpy package so what i am doing i am importing numpy as np in the first line that is our area of interest right now import numpy as np if suppose you people want to find the sign value of 180 okay what is the sign in the trigonometry function there are so many trigonometric operation sine value cosine value tan value and so on okay so the thing is this is the sine value okay so whenever we are performing so many operations in the trigonometry if i want to know the sine value of 180 i will write down np dot sine 180 it will give me the sine value of 180 okay you can write down anything you know you can perform this operation with this okay you can perform this operation with this so this is that answer same thing i can or check the sine value of 90 so it will give me this answer if i can check the cosine value of 100 np dot cosine 100 it will give this answer and so on so in this way we can check the trigonometric operation very easily and we can perform this part in that whatever the data given to us okay this is that part after that just a second i will open all the file parallelly with you Let's check this. Okay. Ah, now please concentrate carefully guys. Now we are learning the other method how to create one dimensional array, zero dimensional array and two dimensional array, three dimensional array with a different method. So in the very before practical file that means this one i have guided you how to create a two dimensional array with this method that is this method np dot array and we are giving the two dimensional array operation same thing right now i will guide you that how to create shortcut techniques different array that shortcut is like this okay coming here okay concentrate carefully if i want to create the two dimensional array of all the value of array is one one only one one so I will write down np.1 and I want to create the array of 3 by 3. So I will write down np.1 create the array of 3 by 3. All the 3 by 3 array value will be the 1. And the moment I will execute this, I will get this answer. Check it. I will get this answer. This is that answer. np.1 3 by 3. If I want to create the 0 array, of all the value 0 and I want to create the array of 4 by 3 size. So I am writing np dot zeros and I am writing 4 by 3. That is 4 row and 3 column. It is creating 4 row and the 3 column. All the value as a 0 and we are giving to the variable called as a underscore 2d. a underscore 2d. Are you getting? So in this way, in the shortcut part, I am creating the array. Either it is 0 array or 1 array. All the array is 0. All the array value is 1. And I am creating 4 by 3 array, 3 by 3 array, 5 by 5 array and so on. In this way, we can create that. Are you getting or not? Please tell me. Because this is very important to learn. Because after this part, we are going to learn the panda. Okay, And the panda will be very easy. Again, it will be very easy part. So, 0 array, 1 array, we have learned how to create that. And if we are learning this entire part, then it will be very easy for us in order to go for the mini projects. And we can do the data analysis out of that. Okay. So, this is the array operation, guys. NumPy array. 
now i am going to guide you about the pandas okay panda so for that purpose i want that uh, you should do one thing parallelly with me let me open google colab first that was the numpy now let me open the google colab and i will go to pandas Second package name is pandas, and I am going to guide you how to use this. Okay, guys. So these are the data science packages we are learning: NumPy, pandas, Matplotlib, Seaborn. Now I have guided you what is the NumPy numerical Python. NumPy full form is numerical Python. It is used for numerical operation in array. Then pandas is the data science package. which is used for data manipulation which is used for data manipulation what is the meaning of manipulation now i am going to guide you what we people are going to do we people are going to read the real time world data either it is in the pdf format word format excel sheet csv format we are going to read that real time data and we are going to do the manipulation on that okay this is that part so the thing is with the help of panda package we are going to do the data manipulation okay we are going to do the data manipulation and how to do that let's check that so first of all i am going to guide you how to create the data frame and what is the meaning of data frame let's understand that the data frame meaning is this check it guys the data frame meaning is this data frame means first of all we are going to create the frame the frame is like this in this frame there are rows and columns suppose i am creating four columns in front of you a b c d and i am creating three rows these are the three rows so three rows and the four column so this is called as frame frame consists of rows and column always remember in this frame if i will fill the data like this so this is called as we are filling the data in the frame this is called as data frame we have filled the data in the frame that's what this is called as data frame always remember and in this data frame there are three rows and the four column so we are going to create such the data frame with the help of pandas library and we are going to perform the n number of operation on that so we are going to read the real time world data with the help of panda library on the panda package always remember we are going to learn the real time data with the help of panda so concentrate carefully i am creating the data frame if i want to create the empty data frame <laughs> i feel right now like this first of all i am going to import the pandas as pd okay let me import that first once it get imported import panda as pd then with the help of panda package i will create a data frame to this data frame i will not pass any data right now so this will create the empty data frame and that empty data frame will give to the variable empty data frame and i am going to print that so we are creating the empty data frame in front of you right now this is empty now if i want some data inside that now what i am going to do i will write down like this i will create one list this list consists of three element a b c and i am giving this three element to the variable call as this and then then i am going to print this so this is the list we have created the list and inside this list there are the three variables three data now i will convert this data to the data frame this list is lst and in the second line now i am writing pd dot data frame so with the help of panda we are going to create data frame and i am passing this list which consists of this three data so this list is get converted to data frame and we are giving it to the variable called as df1 and we will check what is this df1 so it will give the three rows to us first row is a second row is b and the third row is c so this is a one column and three row data we have created this is the data frame 
one column and three rows. Okay. Similarly, I can create a data frame which consists of like this. So first of all, I'm creating the list of two dimensional array. Check it. This is the two dimensional array list, which is having the three rows, sorry, four rows and three columns. So I am creating this list, which is having the four rows. How I am identifying four rows? This is the one list for one row, second list for second row, third list for third row, fourth list for fourth row. And I am giving it to the variable for this. And now I, with the help of Panda package, I am creating like that. PD dot data frame. And I am passing this part to that. And now, which is converted to this data frame and this data frame variable is df2 and I am checking df2. Okay. This is that part. So this is the data frame guys. We have created the data frame now. In this data frame, we are having the four row and three column. We are having four rows and the three column. Okay. So in this way, from the list, we have created the data frame. We have created the data frame. So what I will do, you people please practice with me so that you can do the operation with me. So I am pasting the code in the chat window. I have pasted one code in the chat window, guys. Please check it. Please check it. And this is. Please check it, guys. I am sending the code in the chat window. I am sending the code in the chat window. Pandas. Okay, I will explain the pandas again. For what purpose pandas is used? So always remember, pandas is a data science library which is useful for data manipulation. Which is useful for data manipulation. And in this data manipulation part, first of all, we need to create the data. So how we are creating the data frame? So we are creating the data frame with the various ways. And what do you mean by data frame? As I told you, data frame consists of rows and column. And we are filling the data inside that. We are filling the data inside that. Check it. Okay. So the thing is, in this data frame, how to create that? So it is a very simple operation. First of all, we are importing the pandas as PD and I'm importing this package. After that, I'm creating the empty data frame, no rows and no columns. So I'm writing like that PD dot data frame and don't pass any data to that. So empty data frame will be created and we will check that empty data frame. There is no rows and no columns. Then I will create the data frame with the help of list. I will create one list of three data, A, B, C and give it to the variable called as LST. And I will print the LST. After that, I will use the Panda package that is PD and I will write down PD dot data frame. So this list which consists of the three data, this list is converted to data frame and giving it to the variable DF1. So when we will check what is this DF1, so it consists of three rows and one column. Three rows and one column, always remember. Okay, so we are creating the data frame right now, guys. We are creating the data frame. Same thing, I can create the two-dimensional data frame. That means I can create four rows and three columns. Just an example. So I will create a list of four rows and three columns. That is the two-dimensional array, this one. So I will write down one, two, three. This is the first row. This is the second row. This is the third row. This is the fourth row. And I am giving it to the variable called as this. And then it is printing that. So we are printing this. And now with the help of PD dot data frame, we are converting this array to the data frame. And we are checking what is this DF2 about. So this DF2 is about this part, guys. Check it. Okay. This is that part. So now we have created the data frame. And now I'm going to guide you that not today, tomorrow, because it will be very fast. If I will teach very fast, it, it will, you will not understand. Hence, I want to go slowly, slowly. So tomorrow I am going to guide you that 
with the help of panda package with the help of pandas package how we are going to read the real time data and do the operation on that so tomorrow will be the very important day for all of us i am going to guide you that how with the help of panda library we are going to read the real time data and that real time data may be csv file pdf format and so on and in that part we can perform the operation is this clear now i am going to guide you on mini project are you ready for the mini project one mini project i am going to guide you now just a second i have stopped sharing my screen i will send that mini project to you just give me a moment just just a second just a moment guys okay i am sending you that uh, mini project <laughs> i'm guiding you that don't worry just a second Just give me a moment. Now I'm having the list of projects available in front of me and I'm starting sharing my screen as well so that I can show you how we are solving so many projects with the help of pandas, numpy, python and so on. So these are all the list of projects which I'm having right now. And I'm going to open in front of you. And I'm going to share all this project with you. Don't worry. I'm going to share all this project with you. I guess in the last time I have given the project of story generator. I have given the project of QR code generator and so on. Okay. So with the help of this package now, I am going to guide you how we are going to create a BMI calculator. BMI means BMI index, body mass index. And that project I am sending it to you. It is a very mini project, very basic project. Just a second, again the window I have closed, I guess. Ah, this is that project, guys. BMI calculator. So BMI full form is body, body mass index. BMI full form is body mass index. And the formula for BMI index is given in the internet very easily. The formula is this BMI. Weight divided by height into height. Okay. This is that formula. And that BMI index, things we will get from the internet very easily. BMI formula, BMI index. So go to this image. And this is that part BMI index. Okay. So we can use any one of the formula to calculate the BMI index. So what we did that, we have created the height what is the height of person so we are creating the height like this with the help of input function enter your height in centimeter and that height is converted to floating data and given it given it to this variable height then we are creating the weight i am as we are asking the user please enter your weight and weight is get created it converted to float and it is this weight part then what we are doing we are dividing the height by 100 and giving it to the height column only. And now after that, this is the BMI index formula of weight divided by height into height. That is height square. So we will get BMI. And after that, we are printing what is that your BMI about. Once we will get the BMI value. So we will check that you are underweight, overweight or you are healthy and so on. Depending on the <laughs> BMI index column. This is the BMI index column we are getting. 
whether you are fit or what so this is that check it guys okay this is that if your weight is less than 18.5 underweight if your weight is 18.5 to 25 normal range and so on so on this basis we people are creating the bmi index check it guys okay underweight overweight and so on so the thing is this formula we have implemented just right now bmi weight divided by height square weight divided by height square so we are checking that only so we are taking the input from the user please enter your height and please enter your weight after that we will divide the height by 100 according to the formula of bmi and weight divided by height square we will get bmi value on the basis of BMI value, whatever value we are getting, so we will use the if else statement. If your BMI index is greater than 1 and less than 16, so you are underweight. If your BMI index is greater than 0 and guys, this is the child BMI index. Let me clear you. Okay. This is the child BMI index. So on this part, we people are creating this BMI index. So what I am doing, I am executing the code in front of you. It is asking me enter the height, enter the weight and I will enter the height and weight in front of you. So it is asking enter the height in centimeter. So just a second it is executing. So 160. Suppose I am entering height is 160 centimeter. Then I am pressing enter. So it will ask enter the weight in kg. I am asking 60 kg is the weight. Press enter. So your BMI index is 23. On the basis of 23, if I will execute this, so it will give the answer accordingly. So it is say that you are healthy. Check it. You are giving the healthy. So in this way, we can create a BMI index very easily. I am sending this code in front of you in the chat window so that you can practice it. Okay. You can take the photograph of this and you can practice it. So I have pasted the code in the chat window for a child BMI index and so on. Just a second. I am pasting other code as well. This one, if else statement. Take the photograph of this if you want and execute this. So I have pasted the code in the chat window, take the photograph and you can make this project. I am giving you the five minutes of time. You can type in your uh, Google Colab. I am giving you the five minutes of time. I am pausing here. This screen is visible in front of you. So please practice it. I am giving you five minutes of time.
please write down this code in your Google Colab and run this program. I am giving you five minutes of time. Please write down this. Yes, Sarmas Wali, you are having some doubt. Sarmas Wali, please write down in chat window what doubt you are having. is this in the google collab guys google collab and run this code in the google collab then i will guide you further I starting letters are capital. It is for variable. We can give any variable name. This is allowed. Starting letter should be capital or a small also. It is up to us. <coughs> so please solve.
run this program as it is it will not show error what error you are getting mohammad pasind please print this very accurately check it if any mistake you are doing check it as it is if you will print no error you will get So check this weight and height column guys. Okay, so do one thing guys. Please take the photograph of this. Take a photo of this part. And after my session, please practice in the Google Colab. I will share this file also with you people. Don't worry. I will pass this file with the black belt people. And please uh, uh, run the code accordingly. Okay. So please take the photograph of this. And what we will do. Then next part of the Panda, I will guide you tomorrow. Tomorrow is very important day. Tomorrow means day after tomorrow. Next session. Day after tomorrow is a very important session for all of us because I am going to teach you how to read the real-time data with the help of Panda and do the analysis on that. Okay. So take the photograph of this. Take this height weight photograph and this if else statement photograph. Take it. First, I will put the, my screen here. Take the photograph of this code. After that, I am putting this screen here. Take the photograph of this code and perform that. Okay. Very good. So Lohita got the output. So you have performed the very basic project BMI index calculator and uh, congratulations for that. So that's all guys for today. What we will do, we will wind up the session today because I'm having one meeting and uh, the thing is that uh, we will meet day after tomorrow. Okay. And uh, I'm going to share all this data with you people and congratulations those who are getting the output. Okay. Very good. If you are getting the output, very good. Great guys. So day after tomorrow again we will meet and we will solve so many projects in this part. Okay. Is this clear? Okay guys. So keep learning and the happy learning guys. Thank you very much and let's meet day after tomorrow.
Uh, students, we are ending the session. Thank you.